Hi guys, I am Linda and I'm super excited that you can share, uh, can join us here today. Um, I am part of the Grow With Holiday Lights team at Certified Christmas Lights and you signed up to learn a little bit more about um, how to grow your business with holiday light services and that's what we're going to talk about here today. Um, my background is more on the sales and marketing side and I joined um, Scott Young earlier this year to work on this project. And he was able to really scale his business with holiday lights. And that's what he's going to share a little bit more about um, with you here today. Um, yeah. So Scott, why don't you just take it away? Sounds good. As Linda said, thanks for coming out today and listening to our webinar. Hopefully it has some good information for you all. I know that we've sent you some different information already about how great the business is, this business segment of, of Christmas light installation. Um, as we talked about, it has very high demand. The net margins are 30% plus. It can even be higher if you're adding on the business to an existing business. The average sales or revenue per day per person started around $1,200 and go up per person depending on production ability. And one of the most important things for us was that there renewal rates 80% plus. So you're not having to every year go out and get customers. You can actually build a customer base over time. So now that we've explained how awesome it is, what's the catch? And yes, there's always a catch, right? So ours is simply to train as many folks as we can, qualified people, we're not just training anyone, uh, but to train service owners of businesses that uh, this will be a good fit for so that they'll order product from us down the road. Um, we did $1.2 million in revenue last year. Uh, so in order to fill that amount, uh, we order a lot of decorations. We run, we'll, our goal is to offer you holiday decorations at or below wholesale costs. And the more we order both ourselves and with y'all, the lower our prices will uh, be. So we order direct from China and every year as we've grown, our costs have gone down. But one of my thoughts is if I can put together partnerships where we're all pooling our money and getting uh, product direct from China, our costs will go further down. And obviously that cost savings goes directly to the bottom line. Uh, there's no requirement to buy from us. There's no requirement to train from us. This is just a webinar to give you some information to help you decide is this the right business for you? And secondly, do, are you interested in partner, partnering with us if you do get into the Christmas light business? But beyond just the savings we'll get in our product cost, I also am excited about the opportunity to share what I've learned and my, the benefits I've gotten out of the Christmas light business segment. Uh, it's produced additional revenue in my off season and increased my margins across all my businesses. And that's true for my brother who's doing this in the Houston market. Again, we're in the Dallas Fort Worth market. So uh, the, the webinar today will just give you enough information again, just to see if this is something you want, you're interested in, if you want to pursue partnering with us for training and purchasing your products and additional support. So what was my biggest mistake? You have to jump back a slide, Scott. Oh, oops. I think I went too far, didn't I? There you go. Uh, my biggest mistake. Uh, it, it, in the beginning of this process, Linda asked me what my biggest mistake was, and I thought long and hard. Uh, my answer was, I didn't start the Christmas light business sooner. Uh, I'll have to give you a little background for that to make sense, but... Um, I've run a Christmas light business for 15 plus years, almost 20 years. Um, like any good business owner, I was always looking for ways to improve my business. And one of the things I heard about through our industry, the pest control industry, uh, trade shows I went to, the, the industry trade magazines was about adding Christmas lights to your existing business. And it certainly sounded like a winner. It sounded like it would be a great fit. All the things I've talked about before, the high margins and and growth in the business all sounded good, but I always am a little bit cautious when going into something. I had questions like, you know, who's going to pay five hundred dollars for Christmas lights? The problem for me was I'm not that person, so it was hard for me to to think that you're going to get a ton of people doing that. But that's the number I put in my pro forma fifteen plus years ago. Um, how do you learn about the business? Where am I going to go to get trained? 
Uh, even most importantly, where am I going to get product from? Is there someplace I can get a reliable source of product at a, at a good price that's you know professional grade? So all those questions were answered fairly quickly when I finally decided to jump in, not feet first, but head first. Um, it was crazy. We did $140,000 my first year in revenue. And then in our second year, we did over $320,000 in revenue. So when you think about that in a three month period, uh, it's a lot of revenue, but it turned out to be one of the best things I did in my business. Um, it really helped not only my business itself with higher revenue and higher margins, but it also helped our employees who were able to stay full time. We didn't have to lay people off and the people that we've traditionally kept were actually able to keep their salaries at or above where it was due to the, the high margin piece of the Christmas lights. So that is my answer to what my biggest uh, mistake or regret was just not starting the business sooner. So over that 15 years, we've had a lot of uh, school of hard knock learning type stuff. So um, I'm going to try to share a few with you today. I don't want to get into too many war stories, but it helps to kind of discuss some of those things that we learned and can give you an idea of what our training might be able to help you with. Uh, this is a picture of us running a boom lift and doing a full oak tree wrap to the tips and in the industry when they say wrap it to the tips it means literally every branch every little branch throughout that tree and while it looks amazing and it does look amazing the work that goes into it is amazingly difficult and i had way underestimated the number of bulbs it would take to wrap that tree as well as the time it would take so um, those kind of things now I, we do them all the time i've i've learned you're never going to get trees 100% right, but you know I, I can really zero in on what the, the number of bulbs are, the time it's going to take, and it's become a, a profitable piece of our business. Yes, we really did that. So if anybody knows about belaying, this is not a good situation we've got here. We've got a guy in the red shirt that's putting lights on the roof, and the strategy in theory was great that we'll belay him, so if some reason he falls off, we're all good but you can't belay this way. If that guy in the red falls off or anybody who's belayed before, that guy in the blue pants is falling over at the side of the roof with him. The whole idea of belaying is you use leverage and you've got to be on the other side of the ridge leveraging. If you're doing that and you're doing it correctly, that guy could jump up and down and dive off the side and the guy in the blue pants is going to be safe on the other side and the guy in the red shirt is going to be hanging from the roof. Maybe bruised a little bit, but certainly not battered and, and in decent shape. So uh, I just look at that now and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe we were actually in the process of taking a picture for one of our brochures that we were going to advertise that on when I had somebody looking at it and saying, hey, you know, that's not the right way to do belaying. So again, one of the many uh, lessons we learned over time and the kind of things we can really help y'all with and prevent those mistakes from happening if you partner up with us. Yeah, so um, we want to dive into a couple of takeaways, actionable items, actionable tips that you can take away here from this webinar. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about training and how we might be able to help, but um, we also wanted to make sure that there are some things here that you can take with you, whether you, you know, we continue to work together or not. And so Scott and I sat down and kind of brainstormed and reviewed what were some of the key um, areas or key things that he did in order to really be the successful um, and there's obviously a lot there, but we, you know, came up with three areas, three keys that we wanted to share today. Now, none of these are going to be super ex or um, surprising, I guess. They're just, you know, core business principles. But um, as you guys all know from being in business, the devil is often in the details. And so I would encourage you to pay close attention, take some notes. Um, Obviously, we have the slides here to help you out as well um, and, and take those actionable items from Scott. Now, they will fall into three um, categories, three keys. Again, one is going to be um, financials, one is going to be around operations, and then the last one is around getting those customers. So as Linda said, the devil's in the details, and while these are pretty broad categories that we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk specifically about items that are relevant to Christmas lights, because as you know, 
uh, whether you're in pest control or lawn care, landscaping, whatever service business you're in, uh, each one of them has their own specific, um, I don't know if you want to call it idiosyncrasies, but secret, secret sauce or to the trade that help you make money in that particular business segment. So in the financials around revenue, uh, one of the things that's unique to this um, Christmas light business that's really a huge benefit is when you're selling business, you'll want to require 50% down from those new customers. Uh, not everybody will be comfortable with this, but we found that 95% have no problem doing it. It's Christmas time. They're excited about it. And mostly it's, it's fairly wide, widely done in the industry. So this is huge because it gives you cash flow up front, even before you start doing the work or potentially even training folks, if you're out selling early in the season and we sell all year long, we'll have customers that move houses or uh, an HOA that may move to a different property and wants us to bid their new property, those kind of things throughout the year. But certainly September and October, you can start selling and, and bring in the money before you even start installing. Secondly, uh, under the revenue side of things, um, offer early install discounts. Uh, I'll show you in a minute one of our agreements that has that on there, but that allows you to we do 20%, which seems like a lot, but it really allows us to stretch out the season where we can start installing in mid to late October. We actually install, install the first part of October, but depending on your size as you grow, being able to stretch that season out and get the lights in early. So the early install basically is going out and doing roof lights, stake lights, uh, wrapping trees, wrapping bushes, anything with the lights themselves that you're not going to turn on so they're not very noticeable. Um, customers, I was very surprised at this at the beginning, but they are very accepting of this. And again, allows you to stretch out your season. And then you come back and do a second part install. We have that whole process down that, again, we'll share with you in the training section, but allows you to get that season stretched. And then the second part of that is uh, offering a multi-year discount Again, something that's pretty common in the industry. Uh, when we came in, people were doing it two years. Uh, we offered three years and we didn't see any change. Several years in, we changed it to three years and we didn't see any reduction in people wanting to sign up. They either want the discount or not, especially if you're coming from a referral as you get a uh, bigger customer base and a lot of your leads and jobs will come from referrals. They don't want somebody... They're willing to pay because Christmas is special to them. They're going to spend a lot of money and they want to make sure they're getting somebody that they've heard of, that they know from a friend of a friend or family member that they trust. So signing up multi-years is, is, happens most of the time for us. Um, and then lastly, under the uh, revenue side of the financial picture, uh, don't, don't be the low price provider. Um, you're going to lose some bids, especially early on. People are trying to make decisions. There's always the people out there going for the low price, but there's so much demand uh, that you won't need to, to have that lowest price out there. Don't kind of get intimidated if you don't get the first couple of bids. They'll come and you'll have more business than you can do throughout the season. So you kind of stick with your pricing. Again, in our program, we have pricing for all the different uh, aspects, whether it's roof or trees or wreaths or garland, and you can use that as a guideline to go off of to make sure you're making your numbers. On the expenses side, uh, a couple key items, production pay. This is pretty common in a lot of industries, but I, I and we did it in pest control, but I'd say it's even more important in Christmas lights just because of that tight time frame that you're under. You really can't afford to have people messing around. You got to really get after it. And once we implemented this from our very early days of hourly, which is the way to guarantee you're going to get the least amount of production paying per hour, we went to a daily rate, which helped some. And then a few years back, we went to production pay and our production went up by 40% and our guys got paid more and worked less time. It's pretty amazing when the good old American incentive gets kicked in. Another probably less obvious, but pretty important part of your expense structure is to form your teams, have smaller teams. Uh, we started uh, with a concept of, hey, if we have bigger teams, we can knock out more jobs. We'll have few, fewer trucks to be driving around, less insurance, less gas. 
And that's all true. But the thing we found is the bigger teams you have, the more people start to slack. If you have a team lead, which all of our teams do, um, you know, they're, they're worried about getting the job done. They can't manage people per se. It's hard to find those folks. So we started scaling back our teams from six to four to three. And most of our teams are two or three people now. On some of our biggest jobs, we may have four or five, but having smaller teams pays off because your labor in this business, probably like any service business, is uh, your biggest direct expense. And so by saving time and being production, you'll way pay off the other things that are a little more expensive. And then lastly, if you're adding this onto a business, like I think most of y'all will, that's where the real leverage comes in. If you already have an office, if you have an admin person, if you have trucks or ladders or any of the things that you're going to use in this business, you just kind of transfer or move them over during this short season and you will be up in the 40% plus margin range, especially if you do it well and you're a good operator. Uh, one of the things I did was take part of the overhead from the Christmas lights from the other part of my business pest control and slide it over on a percentage of revenue base. The reason I did that was just to be fair to the pest control because what it did was I still had great 30% margin in the Christmas lights, but it helped the pest control numbers when I looked at them say, hey, you know, it improved their bottom line because I took that overhead over, which was actually being used by Christmas light. So I'd like to share a short example with you on what you can expect from revenue. Uh, it's a pretty simple example, but you can extrapolate it out depending on how much you want to do your first year going forward, or we're just thinking about doing it. You can do, you know, half the time for this two man team, but I'm basing this on a two person team that can do $2,400 per day. And again, we do more than that, but I always try to be conservative on my numbers. I don't want to, I'd rather under promise and over deliver on what you're going to find. The season has approximately 40 work days. Uh, that's Monday through Saturday. And again, we start uh, early October, but a lot of companies and most companies probably start late October and then go through the first week of December. Um, I think a lot of people that don't install Christmas lights are under the assumption that most of the install gets done in December. And that's not the case, at least if you're charging enough, because if you're charging $1,200 or even eight or $900 for a Christmas light decoration, people want it to be on the whole month of December. In fact, most of them want it lit up the week of or the weekend after Thanksgiving. So you, know, you got to figure out how you're going to squeeze those days in. And if you look at that, that comes out to, uh, actually it's $96,000 uh, for the season. And again, that's assuming um, you have full days and you may or may not have that, uh, especially when you're starting, eventually you will. We, we run, um, anywhere from five to six teams. And, you know, maybe the sixth team is not completely full, but your other teams will be full, uh, minus rain days and those kind of things. But uh, even if you look at half of that and then uh, half of your profit, you're gonna do 14 or $15,000 in profit on a startup of a two man team, even if you're not running full. So it's just a great business to get into and you can grow it as big or small as you want, whatever fits your kind of desire. Uh, the next piece is uh, around operations. And you know, there's, again, a lot of things I learned from the School of Hard Knocks. Some of them were pretty big, um, like scheduling was extremely important. Our first couple of seasons, we were running and gunning and trying to fill our schedule and sell as much as we could and grow as fast as we could. That second year, especially it was $320,000 and we didn't leave any spots open. We wanted to fill every spot and sell as much as we could, which is awesome and sounds great until you start having problems, um, people get sick, you have rain days. It's really important to keep some slack in that schedule. And what we do now is the weekend after Thanksgiving, we keep almost completely open and the next two or three days after uh, Thanksgiving, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we keep half full. 
And that way, if we do have problems, we get to them immediately. People are happy. They're going to want their lights on. They give you a little bit of a break in November. Once December hits, you need to have them on and, and keep them on. So again, that gives you that extra time. And if, if you don't have problems, like each year we've gotten better at it, people love that you can fill them in. We can pull people forward and there's no problem filling the spot. So um, keeping product Is that, offering, yes. Will you, will, you, will you go to the next slide for us? Oh, sure. Is it not on there? No, it's still on the revenue on the key one. Oh, okay. Um, that's weird. There we go. Now we're on key two. Okay. Um, I'm going off my notes, everyone. So my screen had switched, but um, so another uh, key item to keep in mind is your product offering. And like a lot of things in any business, but especially in Christmas lights, there's people do everything from come out and install your lights, the customer's lights, and then they're never seen again to companies that are following my protocol that are A to Z, full service, turnkey, the customer writes a check or gives you a credit card and they don't have to do anything. So um, that model we found gets the highest revenue um, and, the long, and the most return customers. Um, within that model, we really keep our product line streamlined. We don't do yard art like the displays and all that. And you'll lose some business because people want that. We don't do um, icicles because they get tangled up. We really focus on products that look professional and give a very professional look, uh, Christmas look, but are also streamlined to install and to store. So it's about efficiency and driving that bottom line. Uh, and then another item that you to, to think about is um, some simpler things like we found very early on, never use staple guns. I've taken all staples and staple guns off my truck. I think every company I've ever come across has tons of staple guns. And I hire people from other companies and they inevitably say, no, I know how to use it. I know how to do it where it's not gonna cut the line, which is what happens. And inevitably we have problems. We can trace it back to the guy who had the staple guns because all the calls are coming from his job. So you really don't need staple guns. You can wrap a tree without using staple guns or nails. And those are the kind of things we can show you in our training exactly how to do those. Um, one last item I would, I would say that we learned, uh, which is pretty key is pre prepping in the warehouse. Uh, we had our guys putting in, screwing in the light bulbs on the strings at the house, wrapping their light bulbs. It'd be at a customer's uh, residence or at a commercial site. Um, it's not a huge deal from that standpoint. It just takes up their time and you're so limited on that time of installation. You can hire uh, a guy who's not trained in Christmas lights if you, if you get behind and just get all that stuff done in the warehouse, the guys in the field love it because they're not taking that time and they're on production. So that was a huge piece that we did fairly early on, but it, it really paid dividends by doing that. I know my brother in Houston didn't want to do it. And then finally he realized this is just taking up way too much time and finally changed to doing that. And then the last key we've got here is marketing and sales. Um, I've got two pictures here. One's a picture and one's a, uh, our agreement. And the picture is actually a digital picture from one of our customers that we took when we were in the sales process. Um, we have a software that will design like this, what you want on there. And this is pretty typical for us design where we would usually have a little more wreaths and garland around the doors and stuff, but I think they wanted more lights. But you can see we outline the house and put wreaths and garland around, stake lights. Uh, we're trying to do less and less bushes and trees because they're less profitable. Ultimately, we'll do what looks the best for the customer, but you can dictate a lot of that with the software and it's very easy to use. Um, something we'll train you on as well. And then the agreement on the side is the is our uh, is sell spreadsheet. So you put in the lines, you put in the information and it calculates it off the prices we have off to the right. So that's again, something else we'll share. Um, the keys points that I'd like to make on this are 
as everyone knows, you can be the best Christmas light installer, the best landscape uh, technician, the best pest control that can kill every bug and never have a bug in a house. But if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. And so this is one of the best parts about Christmas lights is it's in really high demand. When you get to that time of year, it just gets crazy. Um, going back to my pest control days, I remember whether it was a big commercial uh, proposal I put out or a residential, just one-time pest control or a big termite job, no matter what it was, I felt like I had to call, email, text numerous times just to get a yes or a no out of the person. One of my favorite things about Christmas lights is you can get a lead in one day and the office staff can tell them it's going to take four or five days because it's late in the season and they will start calling the next day asking is their bid ready. They get so anxious that uh, you don't have to chase those leads. They will come to you. Obviously, you have to have forms of getting your name and information out. But once you build a reputation, the leads will come to you and you won't have to chase them like in most businesses. From a strategy standpoint, uh, I'll, I'd like to kind of go over a couple of thoughts that you'll you'll have with again whether you go with us or you, you decide you know you you want to do this but take a different route early on it's very important to decide who's my who my customer is going to be uh, is it going to be residential is it going to be commercial or potentially both um, personally I would say it should be both they're both lucrative, but I would start with just residential. It's much easier if you have a hiccup or two to do it on a residential customer and just move on and learn that year one and then start picking up commercial in year two. On the on the residential side, uh, another important factor is uh, who, who my target customer is gonna be in that residential side. I found that there's pretty much two different ones. There's the very highest end, um, for us, the Park Cities area, if anybody knows Dallas, but every city has this where the wealthiest people live. And then there's the upper middle class, which is the suburbs, and there's lots, lots of those. Um, we mostly do the high end, and some of the reasons we do it are the, the benefits that come with that, and that's they're willing to pay more. Um, they're typically better renewal. Um, and they add on a lot of my customers, they may have started at $2,000 and at three or $4,000 now because each year they love the decorations, but they want to add a little more. And so that's a nice piece of it. Now, having said that, they are very demanding. So um, I've had customers that in that high end neighborhoods that are very demanding, but don't want a big display and don't want to pay. And I've very professionally and politely priced them out of my customer base. So something to be aware of and thoughtful on that. On the upper middle class neighborhoods, uh, these are great customers. There's a lot more of them. Just you've got tons of, of, um, of new neighborhoods being built in all the metroplexes and, and higher end suburb areas. Um, they will be a little less lower priced. We've come up with some package ideas to use and we've tried those and, and had some success with them where uh, they can see kind of what their price range is going to be. Um, and they'll, but the good thing is they're less demanding. The ones that we have have been uh, easier to work with. They're just not doing as big as packages. So you won't have as many problems and you can do three of those in a day versus one of the higher end and you end up with the same revenue per day for your team. Let me make sure this is coming over here. So I jumped ahead here. Um, one of the things that got me thinking about this whole program and this partnership and being able to offer it is um, a few years back, I had been talking to my brother who's in Houston. Again, I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth. And he was talking about some of the struggles that I had and, and his employees and not keeping them busy and uh, slowing down the winter. And I told him, Hey, look, I've been doing this Christmas light business. I think it'd be a great fit for you if you're interested in trying it. If anybody's wondering why I hadn't gone to him sooner, it's brotherly stuff. And we didn't always see eye to eye. So didn't really want to get in that to that with him. Uh, but when he complained about it, I thought it was a good idea to, to share it with him. And I basically just turned over this blueprint that I've got now and have continued to build out, which is uh, the processes around 
all pieces of the business and he took it and ran with it. And this last year did 400, over $455,000. So uh, it's been a really big benefit for he and his family and his business and his employees. Is it time to put the tree up? No, please hold on. Um, I, for me, I get excited about this because I know it's a great business, but the thing that I would talk to you and stress, if there's one thing you take away from this whole webinar is get trained before you start Christmas lights. Um, I hope you come with us. We'd love to train you. We'd love you to be partner with us, but um, whatever you do, get training. I'll give you a, a, a short story that uh, will probably help with that. Um, like I talked about, I had thought about Christmas lights for two years, struggle with, should we do it? Should we not do it? We finally decided to do it. And my, my business partner at the time, we said, we're going to go head in. We're going full on. Let's do this. Um, but before that, I had run into my neighbor in my business park back when we were smaller and he had come over to my office and we were just chit chatting one day and he said, hey, I'm thinking about doing Christmas lights. I was like, really? That's awesome. I had been thinking about doing it for a long time. And after some discussion, we said, let's do this together. We'll partner up. Uh, he was a great guy. Um, so I immediately went out, started searching the stuff about Christmas lights and trying to find somebody that could train me where I get product and all that. And I found a company out of Houston. And for $5,000, they did a four-day hands-on A to Z training. And I was so excited. Went back to... Uh, my future partner and told him about this. And the first thing he said was, I don't need training. I can do this on my own. We're not going to spend $5,000 on this. Um, for me, that was a huge red flag. So our partnership quickly went away. We decided we were going to do it our own way. Same reason that I hadn't, hadn't want, gotten to my brother because uh, you have those situations. So I said, fine, no problem. Uh, I went about getting started, went on, did the training, and again, as I mentioned, we did $140,000 our first year and our second year, we did $320,000. So uh, the $5,000 of training was the best money I ever spent. It was huge and getting us off of the right foot, not having tons of problem, knowing what we're doing, ordering the right products, all those things. My neighbor, on the other hand, he lasted one season, had tons of problems, said he hated Christmas lights and ended up losing money that one season. He offered me his products for sale. So there might be somebody out there that can do it without training and just trying to look on the internet for tidbits, but um, probably the most important thing I'm going to talk about today and leads us into part of what we're offering in our partnership is A to Z training. So everything from um, learning about the products to uh, designing uh, decorations for your customers to pricing to sales and leads and operational issues, warehouse, how to backstock your trucks, how to run your admin in your office. Uh, it's, it's truly A to Z. And while there's always things you can learn, it'll be a great way to get you to that next step for sure. Um, so our training itself, um, let's make sure that pulled up here. Uh, we've got two options. The first one is our hands-on and the seasonality is a little uh, off right now because I know a lot of people are in their busy season, but we're looking to offer uh, hands-on training, which would be three full days. We have a July time frame, but we're working with some customers that are interested, some potential partners, and they're saying that time frame won't work. We're talking about potential uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday situation. Uh, and it'll also offer access to our Facebook, closed Facebook group. We're going to have once a month meetings and talk about strategies and new products and those kind of things. But what we're also excited about is we're looking to do an online course. We're looking at six modules that will be an hour a piece and kind of cover the same materials our hands-on, um, but you'll be able to do it from your home at your own pace. And then we're going to add a hands-on option in early February or mid-February where people might, if they still want to, they can come out uh, and do that because I'm a big believer in hands-on. I do a lot of stuff online now and it's great, but sometimes nothing substitutes hands-on. 
um, especially when it comes to wrapping the trees and some of those things where it can be a little more difficult. So if the, any, any of this is interest to you, uh, there's contact information here at the bottom. And if you're wanting to grow like we've grown, um, again, contact us. Um, we're going to open up some question and answers here shortly, but if you don't go with us, get trained. If you're interested in doing Christmas lights, it's a fantastic, wonderful, successful, profitable business. Um, and I you know, love to share more with you. So I, with that, we're going to open it up back to Linda and some questions. Yeah, so I think before we start the questions, let's turn off the recording um, so that we don't have to be worried about that. Um, if anyone who's seen the um, recording wants to learn more or sign up, save their spot, um, there's my contact information on the slide. Um, and I'd love to talk to you, maybe set up a, a meeting with Scott if necessary, or if you're interested in that. So um, yeah, just reach out to me and um, we'll hope to see you soon. <laughs>